The Recreator 3D Do-It-Yourself Build Notes Designed and built by Joshua R. Taylor Step 0. Print all the parts Decide what model you'll be printing, MK3 Lite or MK3 Pro, and print the corresponding files. Read the notes within those folders to see how to print what parts in which materials for best strength. The parts files to 3D print can be downloaded from here recreator3d.com slash parts. After the models are printed, add the M4 by 8 millimeter screws along with the M4 T-nuts for preparation. Step 1. Power on the unit. Check the power's voltage setting for your country's power needs. Power on the Xvico X3 to make sure that the unit powers on and the LCD turns on. Step 2. Open the base. On the base section of the X3S, turn the unit upside down and remove the four screws holding down the base cover using a Phillips screwdriver. Step 3. Disconnect the heater's beds wires. Cut the zip tie connecting the wires to the power supply. Detach the thermo wire. It's white. Detach the power wire, second in from the right using a flathead screwdriver. Step 4. Remove the Z and Y motor and trigger wires. Detach and remove the Z and Y motors from the trigger wires. Detach the breaker switch, but don't remove it. Detach the X motor wire and trigger wire, but don't remove them. The X wire, attached to the main wire array, is for the dual motor users. If using the MK3 Lite, Single motor system, remove the X, Y, and Z boards. If using the MK3 Pro dual motors, remove all the stepper driver boards and use the X and Y stepper driver boards and swap them over to the E0 and E1. The extruder and the X wires will be plugged into E0 and E1. Zip tie remaining wires to the power supply where you cut them off from initially. Reattach the back cover with the four screws using a Phillips screwdriver. Step 5. Remove the bed. Cut the zip tie connecting to the belt to the front of the plate and pull the belt backwards. Loosen the four screws on the front belt tensioner and dismount from the 2040 rail using the size 2.5 hex tool. Move the heated bed forward to remove it from the 2040 rail. Step 6. Disassemble the base frame. Remove the middle 2040 rail first, taking out the four hex screws using size 4 hex tool. If using the dual motor setup, put the Y motor from the back of this rail to the side. Remove the remaining 10 screws, 8 in the front and 2 in the back, using size 4 hex tool. Dismantle the rest of the base frame. Remove the four screws, 8 total, along each end of the frame using size 4 hex tool. The two smaller 2020 rails will be used on the base. Mount the 2020 rails to the base using four screws taken out from the above steps. Install the screws onto the outer of the holes on the rails, not the inner holes. If no end caps are on these 2020 rails, you can take some from the top frame. Step 7. Disassemble the upper frame. Loosen the lead screw coupler at the two screws using size 3 hex tool. Save the coupler. It will be used as a safety cap on the bottle support rod. Unscrew the lead screw. Dismount the motor mount with the motor attached, unscrewing the two screws using size 2.5 hex tool. Dismount the Z-switch bracket using size 2.5 hex tool. Remove the 2020 gantry arm from the two 2040 rails of the top frame. Cut the zip ties at the mounting plate brackets to release the belt. Loosen the belt tensioner bracket on the right side of the gantry arm using size 2.5 hex tool. Take the PTFE tube out of the coupler, slide off the head from the 2020 rail. Remove the three wheels from the plate on the right side of the gantry arm Save the screws and nuts they'll be used to connect the bottle cutter to the base frame. If using the single motor setup, 
Remove the extruder gear motor. Unscrew the three hex screws holding down the cover using the size 2.5 hex tool. Remove the last fourth screw holding the motor to the frame. To finally release the motor, unscrew the grub screw in the extruder gear using size 1 hex tool. If using the dual motor setup, remove the X motor on the left side of the gantry arm, loosening the four screws using a Phillips screwdriver. This should match up with the Y motor from the previous step. Step 8. Motors. If using a single motor setup, dismount the Z motor's mounting bracket and install it onto the extruder gear motor. Make sure the motor's power connector is pointed down matching the plate's mount using a Phillips screwdriver. If using the dual motor setup, match the two twin matching motors together and install them into the Recreator Part 5B spool holder Pro dual motor. Mount with the four M3 by 12 hex screws per motor using size two hex tool. Step nine, dismantle the extruder head. Unscrew and remove the two screws holding the shroud using size 2.5 hex tool. Unscrew and remove both fans from the shroud using a Phillips screwdriver. Unscrew and remove the two screws connecting the heat sink to the plate. Be mindful of the washers for reinstallation using a size 2.5 hex tool. Unscrew and remove the PTFE coupler connector using a wrench and or pliers. Unscrew and remove the M2 screw holding the heat block to the heat sink using a Phillips screwdriver. Unscrew and remove the small grub set screw holding the heat break from the heat sink using a wrench and or pair of pliers. Be mindful and very careful with the heat block and the thermistor heater wires. These are delicate wires. The following work can be done with the wires still attached if you trust your skills. They can also be taken off and put back on after the following work. Be advised and do what is best for yourself. These notes will be leaving the wires attached to the block. Again, take extreme caution in handling these wires as to not damage them. Take the wheels off the head plate and put the screws and nuts aside for the mounting plate assembly using a wrench and or pliers, Phillips screwdriver, and a three hex tool. Step 10, drilling the parts. You'll need the following tools, a drill, vice clamp, 3 16 to 1 half six step bit for rounding the heat sink, 1 16 drill bit for the nozzle's 1.6 millimeter hole, 7 64 drill bit for drilling the heat sink and the heat block holes, 3 16 drill bit for drilling the bottle cutter's holes. Set the heat block into the vice clamp with the wires set to the side. Make sure you do not clamp the wires. Using the 7 64 drill bit, drill the two holes until they are slightly bigger than the bit, with a good rounding. Sand the sides lightly if needed, unclamp, and put this to the side. Set the heat sink into the vice clamp with the single grub screw hole facing upwards. These two holes will be connecting the heat block. Using the 7 64 drill bit, drill the two holes. You will instantly feel once you are through, and that should be enough. Sand the side lightly if needed. Unclamp and flip upside down and reclamp. With the heat sink now upside down, the grub screw hole should be facing down. Drill out the center. Using the 3 16th to a half six step bit, drill through the center core until you've hit the half mark on the drill bit. You will be able to just round the top with the last step in the bit. Avoid going any lower than this as you can blow out the holes for the shroud. Sand the side lightly if needed, unclamp, and put to the side. Set the nozzle into the vice clamp with the tip downwards. With the drill and low torque using the 1 16th drill bit, drill downwards into the nozzle to form a 1.6 millimeter hole. Sand the tip side lightly if needed. Set the bottle cutter into the vice clamp with the 3 16th drill bit. Drill the bottle cutter's holes to accommodate the three screws and nuts reclaimed from the gantry's right side. You can attach the bottle cutter to the cutter plate, Recreator Part 1, cutter plate, using the three screws and nuts saved from the previous step. Step 11. Reassemble the head. Set the two M3 by 16 screws into the heat block to the heat sink. The holes are slightly smaller. 
with some pressure, the screws will set themselves into the heat block and then set into the heat sink. These two parts should sit flush with each other, though a small gap is acceptable using a size two hex tool. Attach the head plate to the heater block, Recreator 3D, part two, heater block plate, PETG, using the original three screws and nuts, locking them into place, using a wrench and or pliers, Phillips screwdriver, and a three hex tool. Set the two screws into the heat sink and attach it to the head plate with washers in between using size three hex tool. Screw the nozzle onto the heat block, making sure the wires are on the left side using a wrench and or pliers. Reattach the main fan to the shroud, making sure the wire side is facing down towards the base of the shroud, lining up to where the heater and thermo wires sit. Make sure the sticker side is facing towards the heat sink using a Phillips screwdriver. Reattach the shroud using its original screws. It's good to add a zip tie to these three wires at the base of the shroud using a size 2.5 hex tool. Using the original four screws, attach the parts cooling fan to the printed bracket, Recreator 3D Part 3 cooling fan plate, making sure the sticker side is facing up with the blower facing down using a Phillips screwdriver. Step 12A, complete the rest of the build. With the bottle cutter mounted, along with the head and blower fan, these parts can now be mounted onto the base frame, the two 2020 rails. Attach the cutter plate towards the right side of the frame. Set the screws and T-nuts in place on the right side of the main screw holding the 2020 using size two hex tool. Attach the heater block plate with the one inch in between the cutter plate. Set the four screws and T-nuts in place on the 2020 using size two hex tool. Attach the cooler fan plate 1.25 inches from the heater block plate. Set the two screws and T-nuts in place on the 2020 using size two hex tool. Run the wire array cable along the back 2020 rail and tuck it inside the rail. Follow the rail until you reach the hole in the base. Step 12B, single or dual motor build. MK3 light single motor build. For the MK3 light single motor build, remove the 2020 end caps on the right side of the rails. Attach the extruder motor on the back rail on the outer edge, making sure the T-nut is set flushed so that the end cap can easily snap back in place. Place the Recreator 3D Part 8 small gear wider onto the motor shaft using size 2 hex tool. On the front 2020 rail, set the Recreator 3D Part 5A spool holder in place on the outer edge making sure the T-nut is set flushed so that the end cap can easily snap back into place using the size two hex tool. Using the Recreator 3D Part 7A spool rod as a guide for straightness, set the Recreator 3D Part 5B spool holder light single on the back 2020 rail, set the two screws and T-nuts in place on the 2020 about 2.5 inches from the edge using size two hex tool. MK3 Pro dual motor build. For the MK3 Pro dual motor build, remove the 2020 end caps on the right side of the rails. Attach the dual extruder motors on the back rail on the outer edge, making sure that the T-nut is set flushed so that the end cap can easily snap back in place. Place the Recreator 3D Part 8 small gear wider onto the motor shafts using size two hex tool. On the front 2020 rail, set the Recreator 3D Part 5A spool holder in place on the outer edge. Make sure that the T-nut is set flushed so that the end cap can easily snap back in place using size two hex tool. Using the Recreator 3D Part 7A spool rod as a guide for straightness, double check these two parts are straight on the back 2020 rail. Double check the two screws and T-nuts in place on the 2020 about 2.5 inches from the edge using size two hex tool. Step 12C, the end of the tunnel. Combine all the parts, part six spool. Due to the way the spool spins, it's suggested to use some super glue to hold these parts together when screwed together to form one part. Otherwise, the parts can become loose, separate, and bind while the unit is running. Combine all parts for part seven spool rod 
Attach part six spool to the spool holder with part seven spool rod. Setting the spacer towards the back to allow small gear clearance, lock the rod in place with part seven rod nuts. Combine all parts for part four with the steel HSS round tool bit and attach a tensioner with one inch in between the cooling fan plate, but ultimately flushed set against the back spooler arm. Set the two screws and T-nuts in place on the 2020 using, using size 2 hex tool. Attach the recreator part 9 A and B bottle support holder on the right and left side of the front 2020 rail. Right side in between the cutter plate and heater block plate, left side set along the spool holder. Set the two screws and T-nuts in place on the 2020 using size 2 hex tool. Attach the rail recreator part 12 handle on the back of the back 2020 rail. Set the two screws and T-nuts in place on the 2020 using size 2 hex tool. Attach the front signage using double sided tape. On the base section of the recreator, turn the unit upside down and remove the four screws holding down the base cover using a Phillips screwdriver. Place the wire array inside the hole, tuck the wires to the side. Connect the wire array together, but connect C to D and D to C to reverse the fans. Extend the motor wires out the hole and zip tie the array to the smaller holes to set the wires in place. Replace the base and four screws using a Phillips screwdriver. Step 13. Update the firmware. Go to recreator.com slash software and download the latest xvico.bin file. Place this file onto the micro SD card and insert it into the Recreator 3D's SD card port. Turn on the unit and the unit will start flashing with the current firmware. Once finished, remove the micro SD card and delete the xvico.bin file from the card. Your unit is now current. Congratulations, you've completed the Recreator 3D build. What will you create? Thanks for recycling.